and welcome to Voyage with Soul Search and Destroy. And today I'm interviewing two very interesting and special people. They are Josh Iverson and Johnny Royal, straight from the UK, from the band Iverson. Welcome, Josh and Johnny. Hello. Hello. Thank, Thank you for having, having us. Me. Oh, it's yeah. my pleasure. Thank you um, for coming from farthest United Kingdom to, uh, well, you're not in the United States, but you're talking to someone here from across the pond. And this is, and it's just so cool because I, and I think a lot of people on my channel have been followers of yours for quite a long time. And by the way, loved houseplants. That has been on my rotation since it first came out. I still have this from oh, when nice. I first ordered on Time Slaves. By the way, if you guys are interested in checking out the Iverson discography, you can still find copies on Time Slaves and Bandcamp and pretty much all their fun stuff. So how did you two get started? How did you become a band? The whole first like EP, Arcade, was essentially my final major project for university. Um, it all stemmed, and that even that stemmed from a parody Instagram video I did with my um, housemates, um, like in the beginning of the final semester, where I found this. Um, I've actually got it here, but um, this like motorcycle jacket. There he goes. He's off. Here. <laughs> I found this. I found this in a market. And, oh, there um, it is. So good to see that again. It's beautiful. <laughs> It's beautiful. I know at least uh, 80 people at Melrose Trading Post that would probably commit homicide for that jacket. Oh, well, maybe I need to put the price up on... Uh, Strictly on off the record. <laughs> no, um, yeah, no. So um, uh, basically drive ride was, was essentially, uh, it was because instead of, because we didn't have cars for that parody of drive, we did ride because we only had bikes. So drive ride became a song, it got lyrics, it became a full song, it got a D-side that ended up becoming Metline Blues. So um, while I was finishing up that EP, I approached, I was I was at the time on a small development label in North London, and I'd been with them for about two years at, the, at that point, and I never released anything beforehand because I was so all over the place with what I wanted to write and stuff, and I finally came to them, I was like, hey, I've got something, um, I want to release it and they said to me well first we're gonna put it to um, we're gonna put it to our in-house producer and I was initially very very worried about this because I didn't want some kind of unknown person screwing up my secret source my special formula my little you know precious art project um, so I remember having quite a um, heated conversation with uh, with this guy um, explaining my intentions and he assured me he was like ah oh, don't worry it's in safe hands I know what you're trying to get at and I was still being an arsehole I was like you do anything I don't like I'll, I'll veto it and uh, Johnny was the person who I was having this <laughs> horrible conversation with and uh, he then sent me over uh, what he did to Metline Blues and it made me cry because uh, I was so happy with what he did. We ran that was the first of together. many tears between us, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so we left we left that label together and then um, Arcade got picked up um, by Time Slave and then we kind of haven't really looked back since. I remember us having our first date in uh, King's Cross, that was cute. Um, <laughs> you, we kind of bonded over a shared love of 80s music and uh, you had a very clear vision and you were like, do you, wanna, do you wanna join up and do stuff? And I was like, yeah, yeah, cool, sounds good. And um, lo and behold, five years, has it been five years now? Uh, yeah. 2017, six years. Six years. It's six not okay that 2017 that. was six years ago. That's not okay. That's mad. <laughs> well, six years, and Josh was a groomsman at my wedding, so it show, goes to show that he's a very important person to me. Oh, well, congratulations. Wow. That goes yeah. both ways. Not, I'm not married, but he would definitely also be a groomsman if I was getting married. <laughs> oh, that's super sweet. And, you know, that's, that's pretty good. That's a pretty good... Um, origin story about the the accidental chemistry that goes on between 
writer and producer. Like, and that's the most anyone can hope for. And I can sort of hear how natural it sounds. By the way, um, Arcade, the first EP released in 2017, you know, it's so interesting hearing your story about that because listening to that EP, like, I never would have guessed that it was originally just a little project out of school. I, I may not take myself all too seriously, but when I'm when I'm working on a project, I do I do do it in earnest. So I might be goofy in my approach, but I still I still want to kind of channel uh, myself, you know, in a and, and bring some sincerity to to whatever I'm I'm making. So even if it was just like my uni my uni project, I I the. the the end of the day, I, I knew that I would get better marks if the if the EP did well outside of just like purely the kind of theoretical uni sphere. Tried my best to make the best kind of EP I could at the time, and I mean I'm I'm my own worst critic. Johnny can definitely attest to that. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I I don't have any nice things to say about Arcade these days because I feel like it's. L listening to that causes me to kind of uh, have uh, an allergic reaction somewhat because I'm just a, like always looking forward which may not be the best way of being you know um, really I know, being... a of, I know a lot of um, sort of huge artists not saying we're definitely not in that category but big artists that have looked back at their first ever sort of product and been like oh i think it was was it rush who well, i think the band rush one of their members just said oh I, every time I, I, I listen to our first album i cringe and it's like it as the as the producer of that art it's kind of like oh, look, look where we are now sort of thing do you know what i mean and um, yeah that's i definitely think it's so yeah artists and sort of musicians especially always try and um i don't know push on and, and do something new and try and evolve yeah I no, agree I mean I don't think you can call yourself an artist unless anything you've done even two hours ago embarrasses you but when you're the creator when you're the artist what you do seems ridiculous like I look at some of early mixes I've done and ironically those are the ones that everyone seems to love and I'm like guys really but but there you have it I think it's just the nature of an artist to just strive for more even if they've already hit something excellent, it's it can never be enough. There has to be more, and there is always something more. As as as, as destructive as it can be at times to uh, you know your self esteem and uh, various <laughs> other elements of your mental health, I I do I would say that having that kind of that outlook also only drives you to create better and better as you. As you grow older and as you um, kind of, you know, refine your craft and you know, become become a more, um, or just a better, better artist, a better person. Like the, the carrot on a stick mentality. Speaking yeah. of honing one's craft and maturing, let's talk a little bit about your album. So how has your um, artistic style, your sound evolved over the years? Like the sound difference between Arcade versus La Favier versus Houseplants, the latter two being full LPs. How would you describe that process? Well, Josh has always been the kind of if, if he's been he's been the heart of the project. He's, it's his sort of creation, his child that he's birthed and crafted and honed and this sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, but you're, that... you're 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 the dad. <laughs> the the emotion always comes from Josh and 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 that's and I'm sort of like I always call myself like uh, the janitor in, in, the, in the duo. You well, know, in, in the sense, in in a very crude sense, where Josh Josh sort of like has uh, a canvas and like throws all these colours at it, and like all of his emotions is like ah, oh, and then I and he sends me the the logic project, and I sort of like right, let's clean that up. Okay, that needs to. Sort of, da, da, da. But um, okay, yeah, uh, in that in that respect, yes, in that respect, yes. <laughs> Sounds like but, a true um, father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Josh is always my, my number one guy in uh, in music. But um, I think it was Houseplants where we first kind of went 50-50 in terms of the creative input. I think with Le Favier it was kind of like maybe 75, 25, 70, 30. 
We would mainly kind of work in a similar way that we did with Arcade in the sense that the majority of the uh, songwriting and early production elements would all be an instrumentation would all be kind of carried out by myself and then we'd kind of remotely talk to each other and kind of like, you know, throw ideas at each other and then like further production and basically refining would be done by you after the fact. But then at the same time, I remember like one of the first times that we actually got together in the same room during the writing process was in Dreams, which comes at the end of the Fabio, mm. where um, it was quite a car crash of a of an evening because I did think... we go through like a, a 24 pack of beer? Yes, we just went through so much beer and we were just belting out these kind of these. Uh, screams and, and guitar licks and all sorts and but um, that kind of backfired up. yeah <laughs> because we woke up thinking and like sort of creeping downstairs to, to sort of hit play and be like oh this is going to be really really bad and then we hit play and we're like oh so it sounds all right <laughs> we just we just kept it and just put it on the album so we have awesome. become we have become much more uh i'd say uh <laughs> more disciplined these days yeah. uh, well I then mean, that especially... was it wasn't it um when we uh went round to your place we wrote um heartbeat that was a very little special session wasn't it but... we did probably some of the best songs together on that album in my in my opinion so like houseplants as a whole came uh, it, it kind of started in the third lockdown so in the uk we had one two three lockdowns for covid um and three was kind of like the last kind of point at which you could be like yeah just like not having to work yeah i just had like three weeks at the beginning of 2021 and I started kind of cooking up some ideas and like those were uh, the start of moving although Johnny provided the baseline but like this is even even when we were apart we were still very much more, it was so much more kind of like sending like back and forth ideas because we knew we that props to each other yeah so we were just going back and forth on whatsapp sending wavs to each other and like we managed to kind of do a decent kind of chunk of the early early album um, remotely um we finally got an opportunity to like get in the room together and uh, oh, what had also happened over these years is i'd accrued a modest collection of like uh, like hardware synths which really also introduced like a real kind of tactility to um our writing process I remember we did uh, like heartbeats was was quite a lovely thing. Like, sorry to cut you off about heartbeats. Yeah, uh, well, that, that was that was special because like I I just started getting into songwriting. Like Josh is obviously I I really admired Josh's um, songwriting, so I, I felt like I wanted to have a have a pop at it. Um, and it was a really like, if I could bottle a moment, a creative moment. For me, that probably is my favourite moment as a kind of as a musician, as a as a creator, because we kind of just we was we sat in your house, in your in your flat or wherever it was. Was it in Leighton? I think it was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was in Leighton, and um, we watched this kind of documentary about uh, some was it MIA? MIA, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And you just sort of we finished watching it, and uh, you turned to me and you just said, "We should write a ballad," and I was like, "All right then." So I jumped on the keys. Which has no nothing to do with MIA. <laughs> yeah. I jumped I jumped on the keys, you jumped on the guitar, I bunked out these chords, you wrote this absolutely gorgeous guitar riff over the top of it. And then um we just kinda of looped it around and I remember just sitting there with it going round and round when we were adding all these lush parts. Like this was it was like sort of peak creativity, like Vince McMahon off his chair, like wow. <laughs> it was beautiful yeah right. and i can i can kind of hear the results of that heartbeats is a really beautiful song so is moving by a way by the way i mean i can hear a sort of collaborative vibe within that album in particular the sort of progression between the three releases you've had so far mm-hmm. and hearing the sound kind of growing up as the two of you have this you know sort of become a 
more interlinked as a team. And the songwriting is just so mature, like not just in the lyrics, which are good, but also in the sounds that you've chosen as well. And that actually is the perfect segue for my next question. And I think this is one that everyone is kind, kind of looking forward to. Why don't you describe your songwriting process, both the lyrics and the music? How does that usually come about? This is the thing that the, the interesting thing about like houseplants in, in relation to everything else was that this, this does, there was a change in how we approach songwriting as well because RK LeFabia, you see basically, I'd, I'd basically be cooking up ideas. And if I have this kind of rule that, um, I open up I open up logic, I open up a drum track, piano track, guitar track, and basically just kind of play around with ideas. You know, the kind of like rules for a song becoming a song is I need to get to the chorus. Once a song has a chorus, then it usually gets a second verse, a second chorus, and it get it, it, it the progress is there. If it doesn't get a chorus, it gets thrown on the bin and it gets turned into sync music. <laughs> <laughs> But um, with so so that that was kind of a lot of like early stuff where like like RK Le Fabier, I'd I'd be cooking up ideas and then when it would get to the kind of chorus part or basically once I'd fleshed out the the structure at that point I'd send it over to um, Johnny and we kind of do the back and forth back and forth. Um, the lovely thing about Houseplants was that we had the opportunity to not have to work like we could do that fleshing out together which also is very helpful um because it, you know if you if johnny johnny is a much more accomplished piano player than i am so if, if he's concentrating on chords and those sorts of elements i can kind of like i'm i'm a guitarist first before any other any other kind of instrument uh, well i'm a singer first but then guitarist so if i'm given the opportunity to do those main things while he's worrying about kind of chords structures and it, it, it just kind of really streamlined the process and because because my, my the, the biggest problem i have with songwriting is is is, is um ideas going stale especially i've, I've become quite dependent on DAWs um, to, 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 to write music and um, particularly the way I do it you just the old loop of death. Of, yeah the eight bar loop of death where you kind of cook up a, a drum pattern that sounds sick at first but after the 1600th time hearing that repeat you're just like oh turn it off I'm gonna play PlayStation or I'm gonna leave the house um, so Obviously, when you're when you're both in the room and you're you know you can put all of your concentration into the the progression, it it improves it. I mean, I remember like um, Animal Sometimes was another peak like that. that With quick. that, it's it's good when we work when 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 it's two of us. It's good because when something gets stale, the other one will pick it up and <laughs> shoot it another another direction. And I think that's yeah. really important. Um, I, I when I write by myself, I, I I can you can get stuck in that loop and it's just annoying. So yeah, it's really good. I think um, and Josh, you are you're very much your own worst critic. Like you you can get, you, I've seen you get to stages where I'm like, mate, it's, it's okay. No one's dead. <laughs> you're still alive. Like we can get through this. <laughs> and then and then we do. And then we have a we have a fun time. But we were we were we were joined as well because it wasn't just us on that record. But we we we, we had the privilege of oh, yeah. like working with um, a couple of uh, Max uh, Marlow. Shout out to yeah, Max Marlow. Shout out to David Lindsay. Shout out to Tom Huskin uh, and Jay, the boys from Time Slave. Yeah, they're all wonderful people. Um, but yeah, um, so between between kind of like us and the additional kind of musical personnel we had, it, it, it's kind of. Uh, definitely laying down, laying the groundwork for, I guess, where where we're we're heading and where we want to head. Like the band has now. I mean, it started as just me, then it was us two for years, and now I think quite we we are now a five piece. Band. Yeah, I think we've 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 grown in confidence. I think when we both started off, we all knew me and you 
Josh were both new to performing, to composing. It was all quite sort of scary. And we played a lot to backing tracks and it was like, this is our safety net. And then as we got more confident our in, on our instruments and as people, we started to think, right, we need more live elements. And now we just play songs completely live. We don't use any backing tracks. There's I think about, I think the, vast, the vast majority of our sets we do and we just play it live and it sounds great. That was the reason why I really didn't enjoy playing live for the longest time is because um, I, I was just very aware that we could be better than what we were like the first first like four years of playing live as Iverson was kind of a bit of a, a pain because we'd have like guitarists playing drums and we, we, we basically lost our first drummer um, so he's, no, yeah. he's, he's not dead he's still alive Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, thank you for um, clarifying because for a moment I had a bit of a spinal tap flashback. So <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah, Glenn, Glenn is, very is still very much with us. Um, Good. But, just, yeah. but then we had like so Jay, who is now our guitarist, who is a guitarist and he's a fantastic guitarist. He is a great drummer as well, um, but he he stepped in on drums as as almost like a favor, and but uh, like between between kind of like people being on the wrong instruments and admittingly my lack of discipline when it came to like rehearsing and practicing I was I was in this kind of spiral of oh it's not good so why bother and that would only compound the issue um, the, you, you live and die by the old Manuka honey now don't you oh yeah no <laughs> so that you was can't, you can't rehearse or gig without a nice nice spoonful of Manuka honey you get it down your throat and then you're all golden <laughs> mm -hmm. It's 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 sugar disguised as a health supplement. Yeah, it's a it's a golden golden pro tip for all you singers out there. Just down a jar full of manuka honey, and you'll be no, no, don't do that, don't do that. Although you I, did I'm... do that, Josh, didn't you? In in a, before a gig, didn't you do a whole bottle of manuka? <laughs> no, I I just I I didn't. I did a squeezy bottle. I squeezed it. Into my... <laughs> You must, you were proper bouncing around like a bunny. It was amazing. I mean, I, I you know, I just, I'm just gonna say, um, knowing that and knowing the story of how your band essentially had to play musical chairs before you finally found the five piece and the rhythm that she wanted. Um, I've been seeing clips of you guys playing live, and I would never have guessed that there would have been any switch ups. There had been any like, they all seem very natural, even knowing that. Uh, Josh Iverson here may have downed at least like um, 10 fluid ounces of honey at a given time, but that's okay. Yeah. It's better than um, some of the snack foods my, myself and my friends have turned to in our darkest hours. At least honey comes from a natural source. Yeah. His, they his could vocal, be baby bear. His, yeah, his <laughs> vocal pipes were silky smooth, weren't they, Josh? Yeah, no, no, no. That, that is, that is, that's the main reason. Just a bit of throat coat to kind of uh, stop me from choking. Because that was, that was, that was the issue with the early gigs. I was, I was under rehearsed, so I was nervous, so I'd strain and I'd destroy my voice on the second song. But now I practice, wouldn't you guess, it all goes a lot smoother and Honey just makes it go down even sm smoother than that. But yeah, no, um, well, I'm, I'm very, I'm very like, cause, cause that's, that's, essentially the main kind of uh, where we've been concentrating all our efforts after the release of houseplants was um with 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 kind of like uh, like it was pretty much like a year after covid um had like officially ended then suddenly gigs started to happen again so we were like let's grab this by the horns we had uh max max on drums at the time and Tom, so Tom and Jay from Donor Lens, if you haven't had an opportunity to listen to um, their music, please Check do. Them out. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I was just at a gig, I was at the um, Future Sounds uh, gig in um, Leighton Stone last, um, last week. And I'll, also I'll let us know when you guys are coming to the United States. I mean, sure, we're exactly. coffee maniacs instead of tea maniacs, but you'll get used to it once you're here. Yeah. Oh, my, well, I mean, we are dying to gig out anywhere. So, <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, right. I, I do mean it. We would love to have you. 
there's if there's a promoter that will that will uh, pay our way, then uh, we'd yeah. be happy to come and play for you. Awesome. Uh, but... Five very very um, very well behaved boys from from good old Blighty come over and <laughs> give give you a good time. I'll, I'll take your word for it. I look forward to that day. <laughs> All right. Next question. What is next? We've we've had a bit of a kind of uh, a like kind of hopefully final switch up in in like kind of band layout in the last kind of six months where um, we unfortunately um, lost our um, our drummer Max uh, to to greener pastures uh, once again not dead he's still with us <laughs> thank you for clarifying yeah. uh, and now so so uh, Tom. <laughs> Tom Hoskin, who was our bassist, is now our drummer, um, and we have the brilliant Parker Weir on bass. And one thing that she's actually also brought to the group is, uh, well, quite honestly, a um, a savvy <laughs> marketing viewpoint. <laughs> yeah, she's she's just basically kind of whipping us into shape um, and sorting ourselves out and just basically making sure that we're as productive and making as much music and content for the listeners and fans as possible because quite honestly we've dropped the ball there because we've been concentrating on trying to play live now we've got her we've kind of figured out a lovely lovely schedule so we can concentrate on live stuff but also chuck out as much uh, new new music new content and everything i mean so right now i mean um, oh, we've got two two tracks in the in the pipelines right three tracks in the pipeline or three oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um so the, we are now going to be uh because everything's all new in tiktok um and people don't want to wait for albums anymore we're going to be doing um the old drip feed method uh <laughs> the old one the new drip feed method so uh hopefully oh. we'll be kind of like getting a new single out every month or every other month and hopefully they'll also have uh videos or you know bonus bonus stuff all attached to them um we're going to be doing um we've got a couple giveaways coming up so i mean to to right off the top of my head we do have a new single coming out um, it's called Overwrite slash Change, and um, it's it's quite a it's a, it's a safe number um, as far as kind of re-entry for us because it's 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 new and it, it te- we're we're going in a we're going like we're progressing but it's also very much for people who enjoyed House Plants I'd say we're working working on a, a music video as well for that. Um, and hopefully um, all things go well. Um, it's going to be available and out um, on the 20th of uh, October. Put it in your diary. Um, hopefully it'll be on, you know, all the all the, all the usual places. Um, what runs kind of parallel to this, I can't give you a date because, uh, because of physical media, it's all quite uh, um, up in the air until it's like very much down on paper. Um, but we do have a live cassette, uh, like live bootleg cassette coming out, um, which is also it has a companion VHS um, made by um, Mike over at Unstable King. Remember uh, VHS? Uh, people, oh, oh, not only do people remember, it's a huge movement out here, especially in my neck of the woods, to collect oh. them. In fact, I bought a VHS tape just a few days ago. Every time a VHS tape in this community comes out, it's gone within a couple of weeks. So, and I might have to check it out because I'm just very curious to see what you sort of, what you put on it, because that sounds really cool. I'm interested to know, do, do you have a VHS player? Because I don't know anyone that has one. Yes, I do. Oh my God. Wow. I also have a DVD player uh, in this room. Oh wow. Blu-ray? Uh, um, it can play Blu-ray. Nice, nice. I like to cover all my corners, you know. Maybe we should just cover we next Iverson release was just get every single thing. VHS, Beta Max, cassette, mini disc, just cover everything. 
I mean, Betamax could be next for all we know. I mean, that's a name I have not heard in a long time. But in all seriousness, I think it's really clever when you have, especially physical media in general, is sort of becoming beyond just a niche thing. People want to have things now. And even though you're doing the everything old is new again uh, drip uh, method that's both old school and very TikTok friendly, you know, also having this sort of uh, tactility, which again plays into your new approach to music. Oh, yes, indeed. Well, there we go. Look at that. Oh my, Look at that. that's awesome. It looks it looks like the. Um, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of some of those like direct to VHS horror films or action films from back in the day that I used to see at my local Potomac Video. Uh, mm. yeah, oh my god, that's beautiful. It contains, so we played um, our last two gigs in London kind of back to back one week after the other. Does um, it also contain the shiny Mewtwo? <laughs> no, sorry, go on. Um, we we um, made sure to record the deck and um, also uh, we had videographers filming both sets. Um, so if you, um, like Time Slave will be running a um, live cassette with the recordings from the desk. Um, obviously this is bootleg, so don't expect, uh, um, you know, the, 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 I'm trying to think of like a really famous live album and I'm, tripping over myself the Beatles um, live <laughs> <laughs> um, it, or, it, it, or that time Monty Python came to the Rose Bowl and it's now on Netflix yeah is it well maybe not on the UK one because yeah, no. I'm yet to see that I'd be very curious I mean it was last time I checked but then again we the people of the United States can't get enough of our exotic British imports oh well Oh, obviously, you're talking yeah, to us. over. <laughs> Indeed, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got the we've got the that um, cassette coming out on Time Slaves, and also the VHS will be available as well. Um, that will be our first giveaway as well. Um, details of that will be popping up on our social media in due course. So really, um, the best way to find out about these uh these things are um if you find us on instagram and join our new mailing list that um or either mail as uh mail. has been coined um that may stay that may that may go i think it's gonna stay i quite like i, it. I like it i like <laughs> it too you've got either mail yeah, yeah. So Maybe we can, you... can we sample your voice and, and put it in, like, whenever someone gets some either mail? Yeah, sure thing. Yeah. There we go. Say it one more time. Sorry, look, say it again. I'll just sample it. You've got either mail. Perfect. Done. You've you got either mail. How did you record that? Um, no, I didn't really. I was well, just... oh. I've recorded it and I can send you a soundbite. Yeah. Fantastic. There we go. Mm-hmm. It's done. Um, and also let the record show I will keep that in our interview so everyone will know exactly the source of the famous Iver Mail soundbite. There we go. <laughs> so is Iverson going on tour anytime soon? Where can we expect to see you? Are you coming to the US anytime soon? We would love to do one maybe some point next year. I mean this year was this year was the dream, but we've we've had um like people in the bands, uh, like multiple people in the band have had various kind of big kind of life events that um, obviously take precedent over, over these things. Uh, Johnny got married. Um, oh my Mon- goodness, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, happy happy day of my life. Josh was there. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. uh, it was an absolutely like it was one of one of like one of the best weddings I've been to. I was like I was really I was really because obviously seeing seeing it kind of being planned from like the very top of the top you know seeing you you both you and Ness kind of get so kind of like worked up at times and you know it's, it's, it's a wedding so it's going to get stressful but like seeing it all pay off so like wonderfully and beautifully on that day was, was really quite something yeah uh, fun. But, but gig you... wise we've got a gig coming up <laughs> uh, October 18th Brighton uh, what what was the where, where are, what was the thing? We are playing we are playing the pipeline 
um, with uh, we are supporting um, the headliner is actually from your neck of the woods Hannah um, we are supporting Parallels so they are coming over to the UK for their UK tour um, and we are supporting um, them along with um, our old bill mates um, Infraviolet um, who we haven't played with uh, for about a year now uh, so that's going to be exciting and I believe we are joined by um, Patrick Fakeman and Slack Machine on uh, on the DJ set. So it's a, it's going to be a packed packed night of music. Brighton is a- one of my favourite places in the UK. Uh, so yeah, come on down. I would love to go to England. I would love to see Brighton. I've also wanted to visit Cornwall, Bath, oh, cool. and I've, I've yeah. yes, I visited London back in twenty. 20- was it 14 or 15? It was one of those two. And absolutely loved it. So if I could, I would take a plane straight to England and visit Brighton and see this show. But for all of you who are able to be in the area of Brighton on the 18th, I highly recommend you support these fantastic people and many more, the entire lineup. You'll be able to hear our new yep. music as well. Yes, we will be dropping this new single. Um on that uh, we will be playing it live so everyone thank you so much for tuning in josh and johnny thank you so much for coming this has been great fun and we'd love to have you back again sometime thank you for having us us. yeah it was good fun of course my pleasure and remember guys you need to check out iverson on spotify on bandcamp on apple music or whatever it is whatever platforms Join our mailing list and follow us on Instagram. Yes, sign up so you can get Ivor Mail. And Mm -hmm. also, if you want more interviews with wonderful people like Josh and Johnny and bands like Iverson, then remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell for the notification, and tune in for more Voyage with Soul Search and Destroy. Thank you, everyone. Good night, good morning, wherever you are. Be good people. Bye. Bye.